Hi, welcome to Gorilla Physics. I'm going to do the classic demonstration which shows wave particle duality of electrons. So this is an electron diffraction tube. It consists of an electron gun and a diffraction grating. The diffraction grating is actually a piece of graphite. And what we're going to see is the electrons diffracting through the gaps between the atoms of the graph. Wow. <laughs> so this is something that you cannot explain just with a particle model of an electron. And when we have new evidence, we must change our models. So here's the de Broglie wavelength equation. Remember, in this case, lambda doesn't mean wavelength, it means de Broglie wavelength, which is when a particle is exhibiting wave behavior. H is Planck's constant, which you're always going to have in a data sheet in A-level physics, and P is the momentum of the electron. Now remember, they may only tell you the velocity of the electron, and you can still work out its de Broglie wavelength because you've got Planck's constant in your data sheet, and you've got the mass of an electron in your data sheet as well. Well, that's to say the mass of the electron is fixed below relativistic speeds. We're looking at electron diffraction. They're going to be diffracted in this target here, which says a tiny piece of graphite. So I've got my electron gun apparatus, fermionic emission, accelerating voltage. The electrons are going to hit this target at about 5,000 electron volts, which is going to be a significant proportion of the speed of light. Hopefully you can see that distinctive pattern of maximums and minimums where the electrons are actually interfering with each other just as waves would. So this is an example of wave behaviour. Interference is something only waves can do. So if I reduce the voltage, the accelerating voltage, then the electrons will be going slower and de Broglie wavelength is H over P. So if they're going slower, then they're going to have less momentum, so they're going to have a larger de Broglie wavelength. And hopefully you can see as I do that, those interference patterns are getting more and more spaced out. Because as the wavelength increases, then those maxima and minima are going to be spaced further apart. Looks just actually like I'm shining a beam of light. Maybe it's actually light which is diffracting in there. But in fact, if I bring a magnet close to this, you can see that the beam is deflected by that magnetic field. Light won't do that, it won't be deflected by a magnetic field. And in fact, if you've noticed the beam is slightly off center, well that's because Earth has its own magnetic field. So this is how scanning electron microscopes work. Because we can work out the de Broglie wavelength of the electrons using our diffraction patterns, we can then work out our gap size, because it's going to be very similar to that wavelength, that de Broglie wavelength. So you probably will remember that diffraction occurs most when the gap size is equal to the wavelength. So the de Broglie wavelength of those particles is going to be equal to a spacing between a tiny atomic sized particle. 